Every war in this Europa Universalis 4 video is do or die. If you lose a war, you and your subjects will be full annexed by the victor, so it's safe to say the stakes are high. If you enjoy this video, then don't forget to like it and subscribe for more. This one will actually go pretty quickly, I think, and I did get rid of the natives for performance reasons, not for any reason other than that. Don't get it twisted. Regardless, there is going to be some very interesting border changes, and uh, they will happen pretty quick. I don't know how much I explained in the intro, but basically they're going to annex them and their subjects if they lose a war. So there will be some weird border changes, like if they take a couple provinces from one of the non co belligerents in the war, uh, they'll annex the person who they originally attacked, but then they'll still take the land, but they won't full annex the other person. But if they separate piece, they will full annex them. Lucky Nations are also turned off we're going to speed five and unpause. And one more thing that I should mention, I made it so every ruler in the world is a militarist and every ruler that comes will also be a militarist. So they'll be more likely to attack their weak neighbors. Two wars to start it off. No surprise. The Ottomans are actually attacking Byzantium with a core. I didn't know they got a core on Byzantium, but they are attacking them right now. And Timmy is attacking Baluchistan and Kashmir. Now I did a test run and Timmy formed the Mughals in like 1450, which would be crazy to see something like that happen here. But uh, it's anybody's game because I've ran a couple of tests and some games they just completely fall and collapse and then some games they win. And a cheeky annex of Provence and Lorraine minus one province here for Burgundy. Early on, Hungary annexed most of Bosnia and all of Serbia, and AQ was gobbled up in full by the Memlux. And it looks like Ming is pushing north into the hordes of Oirat and Mongolia, which should lead to some interesting borders. Now here is one of the first major wars we're seeing, France at war with Aragon and Naples, as well as Brittany, but that's in a different war. If they annex Aragon, they will also integrate their subjects, so France, if they can get a win, will full annex all of that development, definitely making them the strongest power, at least in this region. Yeah, France is rolling them over. They've got a couple of sieges to run through, but uh, looks like France is going to win. Ottomans getting involved early on in some major wars against the Great Horde, the Memlux. So honestly, I think the Mams could probably win if they could knock the Ottos out early on. That would be huge. And meanwhile, Timmy is uh, getting ganged up on. Safe to say, people are just picking at the bones at this point. So what happened is, is that France annexed Brittany and in the peace deal took some land from Aragon. They didn't separate piece them, so they didn't get to full annex them. It is what it is, but uh, you know, eventually they're they're going to. There's no doubt about that. And taking a closer look over here, the Ottomans versus the Mamluks. Uh, Ottomans are currently winning, but they are basically even with the Mamluks. They actually have way less manpower. So it's hard to say how this is really going to turn out. I think the Mamluks might be able to hold them back if they could get a little bit of extra attrition, make the Ottomans start losing all their manpower. But uh, I don't know. The, the, the AI will probably just like peace out for one province and then get full annex because that's how the mod works. And only five years in and John Zhu has almost united the entirety of Manchuria under their banner, which is really cool to see. And how is that? for the Empire of China. <laughs> pretty prolific, pretty prolific. Also, I have to point this out, Orissa full annexed Bengal, which is awesome. Otto definitely gonna beat the Mamluks at this point. Brandenburg has expanded a bit over here. A couple of new tags have popped out, but uh, overall Brandenburg doing pretty good. Also, is it just me or does Thringia look remarkably like a penis? Muscovy doing quite a bit of expansion early on. They have annexed Novgorod as well as the Livonians, as well as I think a couple of provinces down here, maybe Tver, and then I think there's like a OPM right here. They actually have Memel and uh, they're one province away from Kaliningrad. So we'll see if they can expand much past where they're at now. Now the Ottomans full annexed Caraman, which pieced out the Mamluks and spared them. Uh, and in the meantime, their manpower dropped enough that uh, Hungary called in their Austria ally to attack them and uh, they outnumber them like four to one. So safe to say the Ottomans are going to be looking a little bit more uh, Magyar. POV, it's 2022 and America has just left you billions of dollars worth of guns. Of course, anytime you have a mod like the one we're using, you're going to run into uh, weird things like this, like Polish Ural, where uh, they annexed Kazan because they separate piece them out to like take some money or whatever. And uh, instead they annex them. So yeah, that's a thing. Based Hungary all the way from Turkey to uh, Nitra. The Taliban are gone and they have been replaced by one single jam. And meanwhile, Brandenburg has expanded and annexed the entirety of Czechia and Silesia. And now a jam was eaten by a black sheep, apparently. And when you take a look over here, you're going to see, oh, that's a weird color for their border. And that's because Hungary full annexed the Mamluks as well. So now Hungary has borders all the way from Yemen to the Nile, 
all the way up into Slovakia, which is incredible. We are only 15 years in and we have Ming as the number one great power, but Hungary has risen up to number two with QQ in the third spot, followed by Orissa over in India, Muscovy, France, Bahamas, and then England rounding out the eighth spot. Meanwhile, the Congo is mostly united under the Congo and Ethiopia has united the Horn of Africa as well as uh, Nubia or whatever this region is called. Uh-oh. Looks like Muscovy is uh, making some moves here. Lithuania probably going to lose considering the fact that Poland did not take the personal union this time around. Well, my friends, uh, we do have an independent Catalonia, which is pretty based, but we also have an Austrian Aragon with uh, Austrian Iberia and Austrian Italy over here as well. Meanwhile, QQ continues to migrate up north here, eating up Nogai. And uh, Ming is pushing into Chagatai, as well as over here into Tibet. And believe it or not, Ashikaga is actually not the Shogun anymore. We have Hosokawa, this Hatakiyama, and Date, or however these are pronounced. But uh, yeah, Japan looking a little more interesting than usual. Inca has exactly no changes to their borders. And Aztecs have a few, but uh, every time they conquer land, they're just going to get doom, and then they're just going to collapse. So there's probably going to be very little changes over here. And I have no idea what happened to Hungary, but uh, they're getting attacked by a couple of people here. Defender against Aden, as well as Moldavia. And you're also going to see the Mamluks have popped out because, yeah, they had some separatist rebels that uh, also cut them in half. So the Mamluks have returned down, but not out. Also, Castile probably not going to be yellow for much longer. Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt. You make me sick. And meanwhile, down in Africa, Kilwa actually bridged the divide and annexed the Congo, probably going to end up being the major power in the region, considering the fact that they already have a very massive power base. But uh, Ethiopia might be able to hold them back. It's hard to say. Meanwhile, over in Western Africa, still not a whole lot going on. Songhai has annexed a few people. They were actually at war with Mali, and somehow they didn't annex them. I don't really know how, but it looks like Benin has also grown a bit. Still anybody's game, though. Orissa actually pushing that development bonus that they have over here and annexing VJ all the way over into Gujarat, giving Bumanis a nice big hug and uh, touching tips over here with Maywar. Eh, we'll see how it goes. They're probably going to end up being like the dominant guy if they're not already allied to like half of them. Ah, uh, yes, you guys all know Aiden, the Eastern European country, right? Or Italian. They have a little bit of land all over. Meanwhile, QQ is dominating the Memelux and probably going to annex them. Oof, this is a Frenchman's wet dream. They have annexed both Castile, but uh, also Great Britain now in its entirety. So France ranging all the way up here down to Gibraltar and uh, they're currently annexing Burgundy as well so it looks like the power blocks are definitely getting established we're going to have France versus Aiden apparently but I doubt Aiden is going to be able to hold on to this we have Muscovy up here doing very well QQ who has consolidated a ton of development especially over here in Egypt as well as over in uh, Mesopotamia and Ming who is doing really good but uh, the mandate not doing so good because they keep on sieging down these guys annexing a ton of land that has a uh, very bad devastation and then their mandate is just tanking so it's a matter of time before we see Manchu, probably Fornching. I, I'd be surprised if they didn't at this point. Ah, uh, yes, Tunisian South Germany. Very nice. We also have a based Catholic Ducal Prussia going on over here, a subject of uh, Poland. Very cool. And one of the more interesting turn of events here, Brandenburg, who was in a war against Poland and Denmark, last I looked, or Sweden, I think it was, they annexed both of them. And then Aiden got attacked by Brandenburg as well after they split out a couple extra subjects here, uh, Bulgaria, Moria, and Muscovy has pushed all the way over into the Caucasus as well as into the Tartary. Uh, obviously, you can see here that uh, Qing has formed but is not doing well at all because the mandate is a trap and very based. Mewar never changes and it took over over Orissa and is now a completely encircling Bahamas. Rate my encirclement. And I almost missed this. Ethiopia's name is now over here in the deserts of Arabia. Very cool. And something interesting that can happen from time to time is you'll get these big nations like Kilwa that will attack uh, small nations on an island and then they will lose, aka they'll give them like 20 ducats to go away, and then they get full annexed. So that's probably what happened here is Kilwa attacked these guys, lost a couple of ships or whatever, and then they were like, oh, well, I want out of this war. I have war exhaustion because you guys are blockading one of my provinces. They probably gave up all of this land for like a couple of ducats, which is really funny. Also, Songhai has united Western Africa. That's not actually super surprising because Songhai is really powerful. 
they have really good military ideas. So all they had to, to do is uh, unlock a couple of military ideas and they can probably dominate basically everybody over here. So this one is very quick paced. We're a little over 40 years in and Brandenburg is well out in front with Ching right behind them, but Ching is about to absolutely fall apart. They're going to explode here in a second. QQ down in the fourth spot. They were in number two before, I believe, but uh, they've been a little bit stagnant. Meanwhile, everybody is uh, full annexing like 500 dev nations. Muscovy in the fifth spot. Very interesting. I'm keeping my eye on Muscovy. Maywar, who is uh, absolutely popping off here. Tunis, the sleeper pick. And then Ayutthaya, uh, good old Siam, hanging out over there, slowly just collecting little nations around them in Southeast Asia. Laith? Laith, is, is that you? Is that you, Laith? Very interesting. Tunis has annexed France. I can't explain how it happened, but it did happen. Also, Wales is independent. Meanwhile, QQ has annexed Ethiopia. And you're going to notice that China looking a little bit purple because Kutai, a nation down here from Borneo, has annexed them. But not for long. They are definitely, definitely not going to hold on to these borders. <laughs> well, the game giveth and the game taketh away. We have crazy rebel occupations going on over here. Clearly, Tunis not going to hold on to this. They're going to lose probably all of it, if I had to guess. Or they're going to have some, like, disgusting borders, hold on to a couple of provinces up in Ireland, and uh, probably get annexed by, like, a miner up in Ireland because they're going to get one province occupied or something stupid like that. Yep, this is about as bad as I expected it to be, except for England only got a little bit of England, and France got the rest. So that's a thing. But either way, Castile and Aragon have returned, and Toulouse hanging out down in the south with Provence as well. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, Katai Far East, not really uh, doing too well. We've got like 10 or 15 different tags that are looking to pop out or have already popped out. So uh, it really could be anybody's game at this point. Also, very interesting, Mewar is winning a war against QQ. We'll see how that goes. There's probably a lot more development in uh, just this general vicinity than there is in like this area. So not, maybe not a whole lot of war score from occupying these provinces, but we'll see how things go with that. Yo, what is this? We have a Qing that has popped out, a Khanate, but uh, they're not a whore. They are a Chinese kingdom. Either way, that is so cool. Qing popped out, okay. And yeah, after a couple of subtle border changes, Mewar is uh, the number one after they embrace the institution because they just annexed a lot of land and they are now going to directly compete with uh, Muscovy and Brandenburg, who are the only other two majors going on in the area right now. Obviously with Ming slash Qing collapsed, uh, it's anybody's game over here. Maybe somebody will be able to develop a power base, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Also, we have a United Japan, which is pretty cool. And uh, now Muscovy has annexed Tunis. So we have the Muscovite Maghreb and uh, Muscovite South Germany. And uh, yeah, Brandenburg ate France and is having quite a few rebel issues over here. It looks like the rebels are honestly the major thing holding back a lot of these really big nations. They just don't have enough of a force limit or army in general to handle this massive land that they're just inheriting instantly. Well, my friends, Russia has made an appearance in, in one of the uh, weirder twists in the game. Funge has full annexed Mewar. Uh, the reason being Mewar was in a war with them and then Russia attacked them to crusade them. And they said, hey, I'll peace you out. I'll just give you a couple of ducats to leave me alone. That way I can focus on Russia. And now Russia is uh, bordering Funge. So that's a thing. Also, Ayutthaya has taken over most of China, which is really cool to see. And uh, Pegu now is in control of Manchuria. It was Ava, but uh, Ava was annexed by Pegu. And uh, Ayutthaya is probably going to annex Pegu soon. Also, Luan is hilarious because Luan is like a Spice Island nation. They've taken over some other provinces over here. Meanwhile, Britain is absolutely in shambles. Wales has conquered most of the land, a.k.a. they just ate England. Scotland and uh, Northumberland have also broken free. And uh, it's really hard to say what's going on here. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> lads, it looks like we have a, uh, a sunset invasion on our hands. Hilariously, uh, colonial Portugal is inevitable. They actually colonized most of the Caribbean, tons of land over here, and then uh, apparently lost a war to Inca and uh, got full annexed. So now we have Incan Iberia and Incan Maghreb. All right. And again, uh, at war with Russia, crusading against Funge, they uh, decided they wanted to peace out in Marina, who they were at war with to the south and got full annexed. Also, yeah, we have a Prussia now, though uh, they released a ton of subjects because they're not able to keep them because governing capacity is really hard as Prussia. Also, Songhaian Iberia. That is a beautiful color. I'm okay with this one. Every time the borders clean up just a little bit, they end up getting way worse from one thing or another. And I'm here for it. I love it. I know clean borders is like a big one for a lot of people, 
but sometimes you just need a little bit of this chaos in your life, right? You gotta lighten up a little bit. My friends, we have Russian, Iberia, but more importantly, it seems that it's all coming up in Mulhouse. Mulhouse, who is a one province minor free city in 1444, has just annexed Prussia, who spit out a lot of different nations, namely Ottomans and Byzantium down here in Greece. Russia has annexed these Johns over here, and Aztecs has integrated Inca into their nation. Portugal is free again, and they actually have the Caribbean as their subject, which is really weird. I have no idea how that mechanic works. But take a look at the doom of Aztec because they're so big, their doom goes up really fast. And then like once a year, they kill their leader, and now they're just stuck with these terrible leaders. And it was only a matter of time before Russia pushed into uh, the central slash western parts of Europe. Mulhouse losing a war handedly against them. Also, super funny, Papal Balkans, they annexed Bulgaria and Byzantium in the one fell swoop. We'll see how things go, but it looks like Russia's probably going to end up winning this one. But before it happens, I just want to take a second and admire this HRE map mode. I think it looks pretty good, right? Mo most nations are like gone or very small and obviously russia controls quite a bit of land down here in the south but that's a lot of land just to be covered raw also aragon is a prince in the hre which is very funny so is serbia so cool and with the annexation of mole house russia is well out in first place for the number one great power uh, followed about 2,000 development behind by Imarina, then Ayutthaya with over 3,000 development aztec but they're not doing anything in the new world pope man with 500 Pegu, because they currently are in control of a lot of Manchuria, Naples, and then Portugal with 200 development. So yeah, safe to say the power blocks are really starting to meld together here. And uh, we're going to end up having the top one or two here very soon. <laughs> and Portugal back on their business here, taking back the Maghreb and taking over the entirety of the New World outside of Scotland, who is uh, in Newfoundland. And I believe this is England over here colonizing Halifax. Meanwhile, Russia is invading Imerina. Russia is just crusading everybody, you know, Deus Volt and all that for the Orthodox Church. But uh, once they take over Imerina, I have a feeling that uh, the game is basically over, but we're gonna let it play out and see kind of who comes out on top, the definitive winner of all of it. Looking at the map, obviously there are two major nations left, but I think you may actually be surprised to find out that Imerina is uh, not an independent nation. Russia annexed them, was absolutely starved or governing capacity, they're still over by 700, which is crazy. So they release them as a subject. They actually have quite a few subjects, uh, mostly in the New World, but uh, a couple of uh, subjects over here in Europe. You can see they have quite a bit of land over here in the New World, but uh, Scotland still hanging in there. But don't worry, Scotland is their subject, as well as Croatia and Imarina, who I assume that they released or governing capacity. Russia decided to go with naval hegemony, which is pretty sweet. 18,000, almost 19,000 development, with number two going to England with 700, Frankfurt with less than 500, Congo with a little over 300, Mutapa with less than 250, and then six, seven, and eight, Pomerania, Liege, and Linzer, all with less than 200 development. Safe to say we have our winner. And a huge shout out to the patrons who keep the channel going. Get early access to videos and exclusive Discord benefits using the link in the description. I hope you have a wonderful day, and until next time, stay chill.